word lycanthropy is defined as a human being having the power of becoming a wolf or of having the power of turning another human into a wolf. Some say lycanthropy stems from nothing but myth and superstition. Yet the belief that a human can turn into a wolf has persisted since the dark ages to this very day. It is a universal belief. The ancient Romans and Greeks wrote of the phenomenon. There are tales of such happenings in Borneo, Turkey, South America, everywhere. The American Navajo Indians and other tribes tell stories about wolf men. The legends have persisted from the beginnings of man's memory of time. Why? Why haven't these tales died? The tales that say wolf men roam the earth. Nothing smaller? Hey, mister. Your change. You a stranger in Mountain Crest? You don't know me. <laughs> I never seen you before in my life. I guess I'm just passing through. You guess. I'll be right back. Yeah, you better make sure you didn't pay for your drinks yet. left Chad sudden like could could you tell me do I live in this town you didn't get that crocked on just one drink how's about you coming back and buying me a couple no I I think there's something I must do I'm broke friend you got almost 20 bucks I saw it how about just handing it over why why should I I'm in a hurry I don't like talk So now we don't have any more talk, huh? Just give me the money.
Everton, what in blue blazes are you yelling like that? Get out of the alley! It, well, what do you mean, it? Two men were fighting. They were in the alley. Only that thing came out. Let's take a look. You're the deputy sheriff. You go first. Put your girls right here. His throat. Axio, only an animal could do that to a man's throat. Hey, go, 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 go get Doc Jonas. Now, who was it, Ma? Who went in the alley with Joe? I don't know. I never saw him before. Hoxie, you got any guns at your place? I got a couple of deer guns. Well, go get them. Men, you tell Jack Haynes. But, honey, I'm scared. Yeah, I know, but I want the sheriff to know. Come on. I'll go with you. Come on. I'll drop you off on the way, Ma. Across that field, unless they were trying to get away. Come on. Those are wolf tracks. I seen them in Canada. Oh, there ain't ever been wolves around here. You suppose some animal got the guy? The snow doesn't show any signs of a fight. Just his shoe marks. And then, and then nose. I'll tell you something else. Whoever made those tracks was walking on two legs. Well, uh. I ain't going any further. This is a job for the sheriff. I think it's as simple as that, huh, Oxy? Just another job for the law. I don't know what I think. Mac, you go back with Oxy. You tell Jack Haynes exactly where I am at the top of Pearson's land, where it goes up the hill. You ain't staying here by Look, yourself. Look, you do as I say. I'm a deputy and I get paid. There's no job for you. Just don't waste any time and get Jack out here quick. Clovey, there's no Look, sense. I've got a gun. Nobody's going to bother me. Now get going. Go on, get going. It's an order. Clovey, stay up there by himself. You heard him. He gave us an order. All right, stop arguing. It wasn't your responsibility, either of you. Look, have a drink on me, huh? Uh... Hey, they're coming. The sheriff and Chloe. Chloe. I don't want you breathing a word about what happened tonight to anyone. Understand? Nobody. I don't want this getting around to town before we know what it's all about. Oh, sure, Jack, sure. Men, Cora? I'm scared to even think about it. I won't talk. Me neither. You see the thing, Chloe? Get back inside the bar, all of you. Just stay sober enough to keep your mouths closed. Clovey, you too? He's 
been hurt pretty bad, Amy. Can Doc get on it right away? Yes, come in here. How's Joe Mitchell? He was dead when they brought him here. My uncle's got him in the other room until they can get the undertaker up here in the morning from Larkin. I'll get my uncle. Oh, thanks. Hmm. Feel like telling me about it? Well, there's not much to tell, Jack. The thing didn't make a sound. All of a sudden, it was clawing and ripping at me. And I yelled, and you fired that shot, and the thing took off. You know, it's a good thing you came along when you did. Ripping at you with what? You're gonna think I'm batty? No. Well, maybe... Maybe it had hands covered with hair. Or maybe it had paws, uh, like a wolf. Only it wasn't all wolf. Well, I didn't get much chance to see. Pity people can't get themselves killed and chewed up during the daytime. A man my age needs his sleep. Mm. Pretty bad lacerations, Chloe. What's the matter? Wouldn't she kiss you? Wasn't a kissing mood, Doc. Yeah, men ain't as good as they used to be. Gonna tell me about it? I don't know, Doc. I'm trying to decide. Gotta make a medical report. One man killed by an animal, another darn near. Besides, you want to marry Amy, you better tell me. But we're not sure it was an animal. Chloe, grit your store teeth. Give me a little more, Amy. Grit your store teeth and grit them good, because this isn't going to feel good. Ow, Doc! Suffering now. Catfish! Yeah, better hope this takes. I'm not even sure whether I have to give you the Pasteur treatment for rabies or not. Neither am I. Wrap it up, Amy. Jack, what are you trying to do? Scare us half to death? What are you holding back? It wasn't an animal that killed Joe. The same goes for Clovey. It was a man. There were teeth marks of an animal on Joe's throat. We both examined Joe. Amy's a good nurse, Jack. She knows what she sees, so do I. She's right about the teeth marks. Well, that's the trouble, Doc. I think we both are. What are you talking about? Well, it had to be either animal or man. I wouldn't lay odds on that, Doc. Man, what you're trying to say is just a lot of poppycock. Storybook stuff. The things kids get nightmares about. I know, I know, but a witness saw what looked like a man killed Joe. And Clovier's stone sober. You got answers for it? I haven't. There is a word for what you're saying, Jack. Yeah, I went to school, Amy. Werewolf? If you think I'm going to put that in my medical report. A murder's been committed. You can make out your report any way you like. But it was murder. It wasn't a man accidentally killed by an animal. If this gets in the papers, they're going to think we're all crazy up here. OK, Doc, can I go now? Yes, but don't use the arm too much. If what you're saying is the truth. I will take up the search in the morning. I'm not letting anyone go looking through those woods at night. I don't know whether I should take a sedative so I can sleep or drink coffee to stay awake. Well, you can get some sleep, hon. The deputies from Larkin will be here in about an hour. They'll help me police the town and set up roadblocks. Nothing's getting in or out of town without us knowing. I'll check with you in the morning. Thanks, Amy. Mm -hmm. Doc. By the way, if you have any books in the subject, you might read up and tell us what we're looking for. Good night. Good night. Good night. What a night this is going to be. Dead man in the other room and a werewolf running around loose. You know, Jack's got me believing that. Amy, those old books of mine up in the attic. There's a couple on mythology. Long as we can't sleep, they should make some interesting reading.
I was dreaming. I know I was dreaming. It could only be that some animal came by while I was asleep. Oh, Lord in heaven. the boss to bring him back a deer. I'm sorry, man. Why not? Nobody's going to do any hunting in those woods until I say so. Why Anybody why? tries it, I'll slap the biggest fine on him I can. But why? Never mind why. Just stay inside the town. Don't look awfully funny going back without any meat. Horse show raising keen and we're not getting their hunting licenses? Yeah, but they'll get over it. You watch the store and run down and check the roadblocks. I can't help with what papers you boys are from. All I know is the orders we got. Trouble? Reporters from the city papers. Reporters? What do you men want here? You usually set up roadblocks because a man got killed by some animal. How'd you men know about that? There's a talkative undertaker in Larkin. We saw the body. Come on, Sheriff, let us through. You have no right to hide the news. Besides, that guy charged us seven bucks just to drive up the mountain. All right, let them through. OK, Jack. They go through. Thanks, Sheriff. Say, you know anything about what's happening up in Mountain Crest that we ought to know? You think there's a story, you find it. It's been quiet. Car 17's out having a look along the roads. Well, let me know pronto if they see anything. If he tries to stay off the road dressed the way you say he is, he'll freeze to death up there. I'm counting on it. I'll check with you later. I saw the doctor's sign at the front of the door, and no, no one answered the ring. My uncle's probably upstairs. Someone ill? Could I talk to him, please? It's, it's very important. Of course. Follow me in the back way. It's shorter. Thank you. Someone to see you. This is Mr. Um... Dr. Gilchrist. If I can talk to you, please. Come in. Amy always listens. Sometimes she diagnoses better than I do. I didn't say I was sick. No? She better listen anyhow. Take a seat, Mr. Uh... I don't know what my name is. Well, that's a good beginning. 
That's why I had to see you. I can't remember who I am or, or even what I'm doing in this town. You're a stranger here? When did you arrive? I think last night. Well, let's try and think back a bit, get a few facts. What's the last thing you remember? I'm not sure. It seems as if there was an automobile accident. Not a bad one. I was taken to a doctor's office. Who was the doctor? There were two of them. I never saw them before. That's all. That's all I can remember. I've been trying to remember more, but there's nothing. Doctor, I want to know who I am. I want to know what I am. What you are? Was there a man killed in this town last night? Yes. How? The sheriff thinks it was some kind of animal. No. I killed him. Now, now, lad, you're just a little bit upset. Those tracks I saw in the snow this morning, they had to be mine. They couldn't have been anything but mine. Doctor, in the name of heaven, what's happened to me? Amy, maybe our friend would like a little something to quiet him down. What makes you think you killed somebody? A man pushed me into an alley last night, tried to take my money. I couldn't let him have it. It was all I had. So? He hit me, and I thought I was dreaming. I leaped at him, and he fell, and then I... Here, you better take these. They'll help you. No. You're not giving me anything. Those other doctors did something now, now, to now. me. Now, take it easy, lad. We can't help you if you won't let us. Let's get hold of Sheriff Haynes. I saw the police on the road. They had guns. Man in the woods last night. He had a gun. Josie, quick, get me the sheriff's office. Sheriff's office, Clovey speaking. Oh, hello, Amy. No, no, Jack isn't around. He should be back in about a half hour. What? Look, Amy, are you sure? Well, after all, for such a thing like that to happen... All I know is it has happened. Doc Jonas now come down and wait. We must talk to Jack. the doc would... What's this? Well, the guy that killed Joe was in the doc's office not more than 20 minutes ago. You okay? Uh-huh. He got away. Bolted like a jackrabbit when I mentioned the police. It wasn't the police he was afraid of. It was your guns. I want you to round up every man you can get. We're going to search every inch of those woods. Oh, Jack, listen to me, please. I know there's no time. Go ahead. He's not a criminal. He's a sick man. Man? It was nothing but a human being that came into our office, Jack. I didn't get a chance to examine him. He remembers an automobile accident, and his brain may have been injured. He can't even remember his name or where he came from. Oh, Jack, help him. Don't shoot him down. He committed a murder, Amy. What can I do? If he wants to surrender, okay. But what if he doesn't? He was afraid of us, too. He said some other doctor had done something to him. What? That he didn't say. I've never seen a man so frightened in my life, Jack. Give him a break. If you can. If we could just talk to the other doctor. It's no use. He can't remember the doctor's name or even what town he was in. 
I found Mac outside. He's gonna line up some men for us. Okay. Clovey, do you run up against this guy in the woods? Yeah. Doc and Amy think we should take him alive. Well, it won't be easy. You're the boss, Jack. But if it means the necks of any of those men out there, they're gonna shoot. We'll do the best we can. Doctors try to save people. The law doesn't always have a choice. This is our man. Newspaper says they found an animal's teeth marks in the dead man's throat. Morgan, what have you done? Done? Accomplish is a better word, Emery. Someday it will happen. The human race will destroy itself. Not quickly, but slowly. That wolf man is the proof. Radiation creates mutants, people who become monsters, no longer human. They'll make the hydrogen bomb more powerful, then more powerful again. Enough to change every person the face of the earth into a crawling inhuman thing through fallout radiation. Do you really believe it'll happen in our lifetime? The science of destruction always gains on us, Emery. It could happen tomorrow, next day, next week. I don't know. But it won't happen to us. Well, how can you be sure? I wasn't until I read that newspaper. The serum we used from that wolf mutant that died of radiation. That was the answer. By a slow series of inoculations, we can immunize ourselves and a small select group, just as I'd planned. When the rest of the world has been destroyed, we will be the only normal thinking persons left. The perfect science, Emery. The one that ends all science. Perhaps it would have been better not to know what's coming. Ridiculous. It'll mean the beginning of a new kind of world. A world that'll start without... <laughs> hatred. And we'll be the ones to give it birth. How do we get into this, Morgan? Two doctors full of ideals and curiosity. Too much curiosity? Doctors should be able to cure more than broken bones and running noses. I want to cure a world. <clears throat> you see, I still have my idealism. You don't. But to take a stranger, a man injured in an accident, and give him a full inoculation of that serum. Yes, I'd almost forgotten about him. So much could fail if he should remember and tell someone what he knows about us. There's nothing else left but to. Well, you're not going to kill him. If you think he still wants to live after what he's become, it'll be an act of charity. There's somebody at the door. Uh, another patient with a runny nose. I'll get rid of him. We'll drive to the town of Mountain Crest immediately. It's less than 40 miles. If the police haven't disposed of a man by the time we get there, it may become our task. Dr. Chambers? Yes? I'm Mrs. Duncan Marsh. Oh. The man who was injured in the automobile accident. I haven't heard from him, and the police said that you might know where he is. The police? Well, yes, they said he was injured near here, and they brought him into you. Well, that's right, but I wouldn't worry. It's just a bump on the head. As a matter of fact, I left him in my office for a moment, and when I came back, he was gone. I can only presume he doesn't think much of doctors. Was he all right? Of course, Mrs. Marsh. Even his car was only slightly damaged. He fell asleep at the wheel, ran into a tree, and hit his head on the steering wheel. I'm sure you'll be hearing from him shortly. I hope so. Usually when he travels like this, he calls me every day. The most considerate husband. Well, thank you. I feel much better about it now. Goodbye. Goodbye. say, Mom? Did he know about Dad? Doctor said he was fine. Now, what do you want to do? Go shopping? Movie what? Would you mind, Mom? I'd rather go home. Maybe Dad will call up or something. All right, we'll go home. Come on, Scoot. Five hours out here, no sign of anything. 
I hope the boys a mile high rich are doing better than we are. Sorry, men. You'll have to turn back. It's urgent that we get the Mountain Crest officer. We're doctors and they have information that'll help the sheriff. Information? We believe the man involved in that murder here was a patient of ours. All right. Check in at the sheriff's office when you get there. Wait here a minute. We'll open up. Right. You shouldn't have told them that. We'd never have got through otherwise. Apparently, they haven't caught Marsh yet. There's no time to lose. We'll check in at one of the lodges and then tell the sheriff we want to help. What can we do that the deputies can't do? We know one thing for sure that they don't. They're looking for a man. We're looking for an animal with an animal's instincts and habits. I doubt if they'll ever catch Duncan Marsh in the open. If there's a hidden spot anywhere in the forest, an animal will find it. Jack, it's going to be dark in about another hour. Think we ought to turn back? No, nah, we'll push on for another half mile or so. I hate to think that thing loose for another night near the town. Put out the fire, Red. section. Go on, take a look up there. With him. You were with that other doctor. Please, help me. Please. Don't move, Marsh. Don't come a step near. There's nothing we can do for you. You're going to shoot me? But why? What have I ever done to you? Come <laughs> on. 
Who told you to fire that shot? That creature up there! Why did you shoot at me? I'm Sheriff Haynes. We had that mine entrance located, and we're closing in on it. You scared the thing away. Why didn't you shoot at it yourself? From this distance, and missed the way you did? Morgan! Who's that? Dr. Forrest. Morgan. Morgan, I saw him. His face. What did you see? One moment, it was a human being talking to me. And then it changed. His hair and his ears, his teeth, everything. It would have killed me if I hadn't been for that shot. Only authorized people of the searching party were supposed to be out here. Let me explain, Sheriff. I'm Dr. Morgan Chambers. Dr. Emery Forrest and I came to Mountain Crest this afternoon to offer our services. For what? The man you're looking for was a patient of ours. A patient? Jack, it's gonna get dark before we get back. Yeah. We'll set up sentry posts around the town for tonight. All right. You'll make an official report at my office. Somebody will be around in a couple of hours with some more coffee. Just make sure you keep awake. Yeah, OK. Jack, why do you suppose those two doctors really came here? They could have phoned you the information. Well, they claim they have a personal interest in our wolf man. Personal? They only treated him once. Then they didn't even know his name. Well, at least we know the car accident took place in Brockville. The report from the police down there should be in soon. What a horrible, horrible thing to happen to a human being. Yeah, I know. happened again. What this time? The thing killed a sheep at the Sanderson Ranch. Then it started to... It started to eat it like a starving animal. Laura Sanderson saw it. She's in the office now, hysterical. I want all the farms in the area evacuated. Call the people, tell them to get into town as fast as possible. If they haven't got phones, send trucks out for them. All right. You still think we should treat this thing like a sick man? I don't know, Jack. I just don't know. You'd only heard him plead for help the way I did. You, Doc, and I had better have a huddle, honey. Why? I have something in mind that you and Doc won't like. If you can say anything, it'll make me see it differently. I'll forget it. You want me to talk you out of it, Jack? And I'm not so sure I know how. I can only give you the same arguments I gave you before. It's vicious and cruel. How can you do that to another human being? Amy, the lives of everyone in this town are dependent on the police right now. Why don't you try to see it my way? If this thing killed a sheep because it was hungry, it'll go for bait and a trap for the same reason. A bear trap could crush its leg, too. Maybe that'd be better than having to shoot him, Amy. A leg can be healed. And if we can catch him, perhaps a sick mind can be healed, too. If only that thing hadn't come to your office. How can she defend it that way? I've seen you pick up an injured bear cub in the forest and care for it till it was well. That's not a strong enough argument. All right, then, Jake. Do what you have to. Good night, Doc. Good night. Uh, this makes eight traps we set. How many more we got to go, Jack? Just these three. That'll cover all the areas around the town. Hey, Jack! Your radio! Calling car 22. Come in, Jack. Hold it, Colby. Jack's coming. Colby? Jack, things are popping here. Can you come back? Right away. Help Fanning finish those last three traps. OK. I'll send the car back for you. told you if there's any news to be had, you'll get it. You've been telling us that for some time. Hey, sir, if you're going to give us a story, you're still making with the sign language. What happened? Well, number one, 
One of our cruisers found a car dished off the road. Where? Mm, about halfway up the road leading into town. Car's registered to a Duncan Mars, 1670 Lane Drive, Cedar Corners. Cedar Corners? That's about 30 miles from Brockville, where those doctors are from. Mm-hmm. Number two, a police report came in from Brockville. Duncan Marsh has a wife and son. Wife and son? If this Marsh is a wolf man, it ain't gonna be pretty. His wife and kid are on their way up here now. My guess is that Marsh is our guy. His wife filed a missing persons report on him two days ago. How do you explain a thing like this to a wife and kid? Maybe you don't try. Did you leave an okay for her to get through the roadblock? Yeah. I don't want those newspaper men in their back. I guess the best thing would be if Doc and Amy would take her in. I'll see if I can fix it up. Once she gets here, bring her over. All right. Mountain Crest. We almost missed the turnoff. Mom. Yes, Chris? How would Dad's car get all the way up here? Well, he might have been up here on business. Maybe something happened to the motor and he got stuck. <sighs> It'll be all right. He didn't even phone us or anything. You're a worrier, honey. took her to the house of a Dr. Gilchrist. She doesn't know anything. What could she tell him? She can't tell them anything. But her being in town means the deputies might try to take him alive rather than kill him. 
Every minute that he's alive is dangerous to us. Morgan, can't we turn back? We're, we're not murderers. We're both responsible for what Duncan Marsh has become. When the time comes to killing, you'll be with me. These are a little out of date, Chris. Doc Jonas hasn't worn these in, uh, well, let's say a long time. Think they'll fit you? I don't know. Well, come on, hold up your foot. Yeah, I think they'll do fine. You're being so good to us, Miss Standish. It's nice having guests. Miss Standish? Yes? Why is everybody being so vague about my husband? I can't seem to get straight answers from anyone. I'm sure if anyone could tell you anything, they would. I'm not a child, Miss Standish. My husband's car is here, but he isn't. I read in the papers about a murder at Mountain Crest. Is it possible that the dead man could have been identified wrong? No. I'm sure your husband's alive, Mrs. Marsh. Why are you sure? I'm sorry, Chris. You've been waiting all this time. Here, try on the skates. Thank you. I'll see if the lake is frozen. Please, Miss Standish. Amy, Jack's in the office. You better see him. We'll talk later. Amy, I just got the word. Marsh was caught in one of the traps. Was caught? He got away. The trap was smashed. Then he's hurt. There were bloodstains in the snow. Would you care to tell that to his wife and son? Amy, cut it out. Men who've had wives and kids have gone to the gas chamber. I'm sorry, Jack. She was just questioning me and... Well, how much longer can we keep the truth from her? I'm afraid not much longer. I couldn't help hearing. Where's Chris? He's still outside. Sheriff, I appreciate you trying to protect me, but if you don't tell me the truth, I'll have to find out some other way. Mrs. Marsh, your husband's ill. He's killed a man. I don't believe it. Duncan is the most gentle man who ever lived. Well, something's happened to him. Just what, we don't know. We won't know until we can examine him. The papers said something about a man who... You know who... how the papers are always looking for sensations. We think we can find your husband, Mrs. Marsh. He's been injured. We may be able to bring him in and help him. Amy, see if you can fix me up a kit. Bandages, antiseptics, whatever's necessary. You'll need a doctor with you. You haven't been able to go through those mountains in winter for 20 years. I'll get my thing. Now, wait a minute. I'm not letting you go out there. Seems to me I've had better luck with Mr. Marsh than anyone else. If he's... If he's himself, there won't be any trouble. Sheriff, I know Duncan won't give you any trouble if Chris and I are with you. I don't know what's right anymore. I think Mrs. Marsh is, Jack. But what if her husband's... Whatever my husband is, Sheriff Haynes, I want to help him in every way I can. Well, I'm taking a portable public address system with me so I can talk to him from a distance. I don't want to scare him off again. I'm hoping that we can talk him into giving himself up. Please, take Chris and me. Amy, see if you can find some more warm clothes. Mrs. Marsh and the boy are going with us. No rifles. We'll carry pistols under our coats where you can't see them. Yeah, I guess most animals are gun shy after the first shot. Hello, Sheriff. Starting a new search? Leaving in a few minutes. Dr. Forrest and I would like to help if we may. Thanks, but the less people along this time, the better it might be. Going to try to take your man alive? If it's possible. I see. Well, I suppose it's the most humane thing at that. Can you stay in town a while longer? Right, of course, if you wish. There's some things about this case that are still bothering me. Maybe you can help clear them up. Well, good luck, Sheriff. Thanks. Goodbye. I thought he told you all he knew. Well, according to Marsh's wife, nothing was ever chalked up against Marsh until his car accident. Dr. Chambers treated him. Maybe it means something, maybe it doesn't. We'll find out.
Wait here. Mom, let me go with him. That track takes off to the east. We'll circle around and pick up the trail the other side of that low hill. All right. I don't want his wife to see this. You know, Jack, when this is over with, I'm going to get drunk and stay that way for a whole week. You're going to have company. Duncan! Duncan! Duncan Marsh! Duncan Marsh! You can hear me show yourself. We want to help you. Duncan Marsh. We know you've been hurt. We're here to help you. Duncan, I know you're hurt. Duncan, I know you're hurt. Come on down. We'll keep going. You couldn't get much further with an injured leg. Jack, thanks for doing it this way. Let's hope he's normal. We do find him. If prayers help, he will be. Duncan Marsh, we're ready to help you. Show yourself. Wait a minute. Duncan Marsh. Duncan Marsh, we know you're up there. Show yourself. No harm will come to you. We want to help you. Maybe if I could talk to him through that, maybe if he could hear my voice. Duncan? Duncan, darling, this is Helen. Please listen. Try to understand, Duncan. We want you to come up home. We want everything to be right again. These men have promised not to harm you. Show us where you are, Duncan, please, darling. Chris is here with me. He wants you to come home, too. We know you're hurt, darling. But there's a nurse here who's going to help you. Stay here. Please make them leave. Any minute something could happen. Dad, I want to be 
with you. Mrs. Marsh, your husband needs plasma, and I can't administer it while he's upset. You better take Chris and wait below. Chris, go with your mother. It was the traps that got him, I tell you. There's an art in setting them, you know that. Place them just right, and then kind of figure if the wind will take the smell of your bait the way you want it. Yes, sir, me and the sheriff and Fanning are real handy with a bear trap. We caught that wolf man right in the ankle. So he can't run much anymore, can he, huh? Shut up, Dergus, you talk too much. Well, I was just... All right, all right, if that's the way you feel. Excuse me, fellas. You feel lousy about it, don't you? I was just over to the jail a little while ago. Jack wanted me to make a statement. Marsha's wife and kid are there. Funny. You think maybe you got all the troubles in the world? Till something like this happens to somebody else. I think I need a straight shot. I've never seen anything like it. Everybody's going crazy. All of them scared. Scared? Of what? They're celebrating. The Wolfman's captured. I think I know what they're scared of. They're scared of what Marsh has become. Because it could happen to them. It could happen to anyone. You see, now they know it's possible. Make that a double shot. How long do we have to wait like this? Patience, Emery. Just a little more patience. How long do you think he'll stay the way he is? Oh, even he doesn't know that. He saw the way he broke the bear trap. What makes you think he couldn't break out of the cell the same way? Look, I got enough troubles of my own with this report. Duncan, isn't there anything I can say that will change your mind? You think it's easy for me to send you and Chris away? When I'm better, I, I'll come home. Please, darling, do as I say. If it should come back while you're still here, that's the way you'll always remember me. It would never be any good, even if I did come home. Please, leave now while I'm still all right. Dad, I don't want to go. Please, Chris, don't make it so tough for me. Come back soon, darling. We'll be waiting for you. Come on, son, we have to leave. Come on. Send someone all the way home with you. The roads are pretty bad at night. Thank you. We'll find out how Marsh got that way. We'll find out and we'll find a way to cure him. Check. I'll check back later. You better grab some sleep before you fall flat on your face. 
Uh, I'll take the first shift if you want. You know, I'm beginning to forget what sleep was like myself. Well, look, if anything happens in here, get a hold of us quick. There's a knot in Sentinel. Oh, yes, there is. Oh, you... What's the matter? What's the matter? Huh? Nobody else want to hear how we caught the wolf man? Why don't you get lost? Get lost? Nobody wants to hear about it. Well, we caught him. Yeah. Well, we caught him, all right. Right in the ankle. Miss the Emery, patience is his own reward. Go to the sheriff's office and find out what precautions are being taken to guard Marsh tonight. You're not going to do anything at the jail. Please, I'm going to do as I ask. Well, she and the boy are gone. Gibbs is a good man. He'll drive them home all right. We were talking, Jack. Up until now, what's happened to Duncan Marsh is beyond all our known laws of science and medicine. You know, this thing didn't come on him suddenly of his own volition. You're trying to say somebody did it to him? Yes. Well, if it's beyond anything men know, how could somebody do it? It's a frightening thought that a single human being out of all the millions and millions could somehow have obtained that kind of knowledge. We want to send samples of his blood to a laboratory for tests. Well, that's up to Marsh. But he'll do anything if it'll help him. We don't feel it much up here in a place like Mountain Crest, but the world's a place of change. Recently, for the first time in history, men were able to manufacture diamonds, real diamonds. For the first time, men are making new valves for the heart and machines that can take all of a man's blood out of his body and then put it back again while he's still breathing. Every day, science and medicine start up new roads. And you think Duncan Marsh is one of these new roads? The thing is, the man who did it to Marsh, what did he have in mind? And what kind of a future is he dreaming up for everybody else? You two are giving me the creeps. Doc, right now I'm too tired to look up any of those new roads of yours. Well, why don't you sleep on the couch tonight, honey, instead of going all the way home? With all you've given me to think about, I'm not sure I could sleep anywhere. <laughs> Try it. You are going to talk to Duncan about those blood tests in the morning. Sure. Providing. Providing. Hey, you're welcome, Sid. Well, you're not. My bed looked much better. No change in Marsh. He's out cold. The guy's exhausted. Well, I hope he stays that way till the ambulance picks him up in the morning. Yeah. Well, I'll see you in a few hours. Right. Fine for us, Emery. Get my bag in a hurry. Meet me near the jail. Hello there. Who are you? You know me? Mister, do you think if I could see, I'd be standing here? I'll give you a hand. Oh, well, I gotta go the other way. Oh, wait a minute. Aren't you the one who almost caught the wolf man in the bear trap? I got him right in the ankle. 
That's me, I'm the guy. And do you know something else? He broke that trap wide open. What do you think of that? Yeah, I hear they got the pieces down at the sheriff's office. Could you show them to me? Certainly. The sheriff's a pal of mine. Come on. Get my bag. See what condition he's in. Scared away from the village. Jack, I'm, I'm in a fog. What gives? Marshall's killed Chambers and Forrest. We can't take him alive this time, Amy. He's killed two more men. You can take a look at them, Doc, but I don't think it'll do much good. Come on.
came this way. Well, it'll be light in a little while. Then we'll get him. Yeah. Torches up there. I'll take your turn back now. He's scared. I don't want to take a chance on these men getting hurt. We'll wait till it's light. Let's go back. above the bridge. Let's try to cut him off.
You see that? He changed back again. Do you think he'll stay that way this time? Yeah, he'll stay. Now he can go home. 